All right. Hey, folks. So the question of the day is, um, if you are gaining strength and gaining muscle, are you overtrained? Logic would say no, but I want to just throw something into the works to talk about a lot then bring up for discussion. So firstly, thanks for making it onto my channel. If you have any questions or comments, pop them down below. And if you'd like to work with me on your own strength and physique goals, there is a link in the description. Now, I came across this study which um, resonated with me and I'll just pop it over here. It's called, Can Sleep Be Used as an Indicator of Overreaching and Overtraining in Athletes? Now, I'll link the study down below. It's quite a short one. It's basically just a summary of thoughts with a collection of other studies to pose kind of a theory. It's not a definite study they did. It's just a hypothesis they're putting forward. Now, if we look at the relationship between sleep and overtraining and look at places like Reddit, you know, it's pretty commonplace that people will say, yeah, sleep goes to crap when I overtrain, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there's actually not that much research in the area which directly looks at the effect going one way because we can't really isolate whether it's a case of, okay, bad sleep caused overtraining or did the overtraining cause bad sleep? So plenty of people will say, yeah, you know, it was my training which caused my sleep to get worse, but we don't really know if the relationship is one way or the other. So that's sort of the main thing, but it, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's something that's commonly talked about. Now, the rub here is this. This is the interesting part. You can still gain strength and gain muscle even though your sleep has gone to crap. So let's say you talk to a coach and you go, look, coach, I'm overtrained because I know this because I can't sleep. My sleep's terrible. I've got insomnia and it's happened at week six of this cycle, whatever, as my weights have climbed up and I'm really training hard. And all of a sudden, wham, I can't sleep. I'm sure it's my training. But then the coach would ask you something sensible that I would say is, well, are you still gaining strength? And you'd say, yes. Well, you know, one would surmise, okay, well, you're not overtraining. By definition, you're not, because overtraining is the inability to actually carry on getting stronger, your inability to recover from the load and the stress you're placing onto your body. That is by definition overtraining. But your sleep has still gone to crap. Now, that's actually a relatively common scenario, and that's kind of what I wanted to explore today and give you my thoughts and my own experience and example on it. So in my experience, my personal experience, I can still gain strength even if I've trained to the point where my sleep has gone to crap. Like I can go to the gym and I can force myself through a brutal workout, you know, like I've had 15 years of powerlifting, you know, 22 years in the gym now, I can go in and I can just force through a session and force poundage progression, just by sheer will of working hard. And I can continue to do that over and over and over until I hit a stone cold wall. But within those weeks, my sleep may have gone to crap. My mood may have been terrible. My body just looks flat and lifeless, but I can push myself past the point where I would normally, I should normally just, you know, call it a day. Now, this is also a nod to why I like block periodization, but there you go. That's another story. So this is the rub. You know, people might be at home thinking, well, that's obvious. Yeah, of course you can. Of course, um, you know, sleep, uh, poor overtraining causes bad sleep. Of course, people might be sitting at home thinking, well, that's obvious. But it's not actually that obvious if you think about it, because if you're still progressing in the gym, if you're still gaining strength, if you're still gaining size, then by definition, your training is working. What you're doing is working. It's just... I think a lot of people put up with poor sleep as just um, kind of uh, par for the course, as in, yeah, well, this is just a side effect of effective training, working hard. And you get to that sort of stage where, you know, the kind of sleep you get where you can get to sleep okay, or perhaps you knock yourself out with some melatonin, but then you're up at two or three in the morning. You're like, oh, I'm wired. That's the kind of insomnia that people describe on Reddit. So my personal experience is I have experienced in this past, definitely, but I've been pushing really hard. Either the volume has been ramped up really high or just the poundages are getting pretty extreme and I'm training really hard. Again, doing those sort of grindy sessions where I'm training to failure and I've perhaps not taken my own advice that I would give to my clients and I've not deloaded. This tends to be a problem for me and sleep starts to go to crap, which then makes the training sessions even worse and I'm more likely to run on nervous energy, which then just exacerbates the issue. So it all basically boils down to the point of why do we actually train in the first place? Well, we train to be healthier, we train to feel better, right? So that's the big things. But if the training, despite being able to add weight to the bar, is causing us to feel worse, 
and actually perhaps causing some niggles and some knocks and whatnot. Because I think when stuff like this happens, you're probably more likely to get aches and pains as well as the lack of sleep because then you're not able to recuperate as well because you're not sleeping as well. So your little aches and niggles potentially get worse. So yeah, it's a common complaint. Like people will come to me and go, you know what, oh, my sleep is horrendous. Like, yeah, I'm doing great in the gym. I know what I'm doing training wise. I know what I'm doing diet wise, but my sleep is terrible. And it's been terrible for years. And that's when I start to dig into things and look at what they're doing. A lot of them are doing just a lot of work, like, and tends to be a lot of busy work as well, you know? So what I mean by that is obviously we all have to work, but I mean, in the gym, it's busy work. It's a lot of what nowadays we call junk volume. And so you look at the programs, you think, okay, well, one, they're just doing a ton of just stuff, but also they're not that focused on progression. So they're just like going into the gym and just training for four or five days a week, but they're not actually gaining that much strength because there's no progression model there. But at the same time, it's almost like they're going in just to scratch an itch and they feel like they have to do it. And some of them might even be gaining some, as I say, some strength and size, but they're training just to scratch an itch rather than have it planned, periodized, um, and perfected so that they can train optimally rather than just train a lot. And uh, if we look at it's one of the common themes from the past sort of five or 10 years, and you guys have heard me harp on about this a lot, which is this obsession on volume. And one of the other questions I get, which is super common is, how much volume should I do? So before we've even looked at progression, we start with the basis of people nowadays, they start with the basis of how much volume should I do? And they always got that 10 to 20 set, you know, landmark in their head. And that may not be appropriate for a lot of you guys. You know, if you guys are you're like me, you know, 40 years old now, perhaps 50, perhaps 60, it might not be appropriate to have all that volume in your workouts. So I always say, start with the minimum, which you need to actually progress and then go from there. And I do believe that probably quite a lot of us, quite a lot of you guys, are walking around in a slightly overtrained, slightly overreach state because it's 2021, no one's stress free, and stress is cumulative. Like the stress you feel in your life, the emotional stress adds to the stress which you comes from the gym. So as a result of that, it can sort of get lost in the mix because you get all these signs saying, okay, I need this amount of volume, 10 to 20 sets, I need this amount of frequency, twice a week at least, all that kind of stuff. But you've got a full-time job, you know. You've got some life stress, you've got kids, you know, you've got a partner, all that kind of stuff. You've got to keep up appearances there. So it's almost like the 10 to 20 sets twice a week is almost like a baseline for some people these days, which it shouldn't be. You can start a lot lower and we can start there just to make sure that we won, we're feeling good from our workouts while still allowing for recovery and still allowing for growth. So I think that probably a lot of people are walking around chronically overtrained or overreached, and that's possibly a reason why they have such crap sleep because the sleep thing is very very common like a lot of people will ask me that sleep is terrible how can I sleep better so the question which was posed in the research article was is poor sleep the cause of overtraining or is it vice versa and that's something that they want to research some more so it would be interesting to see what they come out with but all I would say to you guys is consider that a possible factor if you are still gaining muscle if you are still gaining strength but for years now, perhaps, for months, for years, your sleep has been awful, maybe consider pulling back a little bit. And I know we harp on a lot, like me on my channel, um, Steve Shaw on Massive Vion, you know, Jeffrey Verity Schofield on his channel, we harp on a lot about working hard, but you don't need to do a massive amount. We are all against junk volume. So perhaps start pulling back a little bit, see what you can get away with, see what you can still gain on. Let's say you take your bench press to I don't know, 120 kilos, two and a half plates for a set of 10. And let's say you do that doing six sets a week. Are you going to be any less big than if you did that with 20 sets a week? I would say probably not. So start with the minimum and let's see how that affects the rest of your life. You still got to work hard, but it may be a case of let's pull back a little bit and see if that is a, a better for us and it's beneficial for our sleep. But there we go, just something to consider. And if we look at the research article, those researchers seem to think it's very clear and they pull together a bunch of other research which suggests that actually, yes, sleep can be used as a gauge independent of performance increases. That is the interesting thing. Right, folks, I will call it there. Hopefully that was useful and I'll speak to you next time.